So let's begin with today's discussion. Let's see what we have in store for day seven of our training on data analytics using Microsoft Excel. Before that, let's do a quick recap of day six. Yesterday, we looked at VLOOKUP with MATCH function, how we can use it along with MATCH. We saw the limitations of VLOOKUP and how now in Office 365, there is XLOOKUP that can take care of those limitations helps us overcome those limitations. Finally, data validation lists. Okay, this is what we had covered yesterday. Now, what we will be doing today is we will focus on index and match. We will understand the two-way lookup. One demonstration I had given you all yesterday with X lookup, we will do it again and do it with index and match as well. Then with that, we will wind up our discussion on lookup functions, index, match, all these things. And we'll proceed to the next segment of our training where we focus on some basic text functions. Okay, for today, we will see formatting the data to some extent. And tomorrow we will move on to converting the data into tables and what kind of manipulation we can do on the data and the tables, cleaning of data and pivot tables, okay? So that is the root map. Now let's discuss about the very first thing, um, index and match. But before that, let's do a quick recap on XLOOKUP. OK, so this is our data, something that we are familiar with. We have product name here. And each of these products, they belong to certain type like coffee or espresso or herbal tea or just tea. And the product line, they come under two different lines. They could either be belong to beans or leaves. We have the profit and the sales of these products registered. Now the product is here on the, towards the right. And we have to look for the information that is to the left of this product data, right? So VLOOKUP will not help in this case, as we saw. We must make use of XLOOKUP. So using XLOOKUP, how do we fetch the product type? Equal to XLOOKUP. Again, I repeat, this function is available in Microsoft Office 365, not uh, in any of the other versions. So what is the lookup value? I would like to look up for this particular product, which is entered in here in this cell, H1. And where am I supposed to? look up for it. I need to look up for it over here. Uh, I think I created a table. So let me first do one thing. Um, I will just convert this back to a range. Okay. Let's treat it as a range and work with it initially. Equal to X lookup. Lookup value is the data in H1 cell, comma. We need to look up for it over here, comma. And we would like it to return the product type, which is in this particular column. So I selected that range of data and I will simply close it. Okay, I'm not doing anything else over there. By default, it will go with exact match and it will pick up the product type. So for this product, the product uh, type is coffee, as you can see. Now, how can we make it easier for people to search for something is by creating the list. Okay, how do we create a list again? We can go to the data menu. Um, sorry. Formulas, okay, so formulas. And over there, what have I done? Okay, here the list is anyway present already. I'll let no let's do one more example. Okay, let's just go ahead. And what we'll do here is, uh, this time, okay, this time, I'm going to create named ranges for these things. Let me check if there are any. Under formulas, if you go here, okay, name manager, if there, if there are any named ranges that we've already created, we can find them here. I'll quickly delete them, okay, because I want to do it again. All right. So we can also search by giving a named range, isn't it? So name manager, we can go there and see whether we have given any ranges. Here I have deleted everything. Now, how do you give, give names to the ranges of data and how does it help us? 
it helps us with referencing, right? So we just select the column and we can click on this option, create from selection. Okay, then I will go click here, click on this option, create from selection. The name that is supposed to be given to this range of values is in the top row. Means it will take product line as the name of this range. So I'll click here and cre click on the create from selection. It will take profit, the top row, the data in the top row as the name of that range. And I will create from selection. Okay, so it's sales. And this also we will give it a name range, top row. Click on OK. So now if you go to the name manager, you will be able to see all the name ranges that have been defined. And what does it refer to? By default, it's referring to these things. Okay. Now using the name ranges, if we build a formula, it becomes very easy for us. Lookup value is what is in H1. That will not change. The lookup array, I'll just press down the F3. I need to search for it in the product column. Okay, so now it's much easier to reference it. Comma, return array is the product line in this case that I want. So again, I'm pressing down F3 function key. Here is product line. Okay, and if not found what to do, I'm not telling anything because I have given a validation list which means it is definitely, the user is definitely going to enter something that is valid itself from that list. Okay, and uh, match mode, when we do not specify anything, by default it is zero, means it is going for exact match. Okay, and uh, search mode, it will do from top to bottom by default. Search mode is whether you go, want to go from first to last or last to first. These kind of things can be specified by default from the top to bottom. So I'll just close the uh, parenthesis there. So the product line for this particular product is beans. Okay. So by using name ranges, this is how it makes our life easier. What else can we do? We can convert this table, uh, this range of data into a table. Now, how do I know that this is a range and it is not a table yet? Right? How would we know that is this, this is just a range? It's not a table yet. That is when you click anywhere inside the table, we don't see anything called as table or table design come up on the top, right? Which means this is a range. When you have converted it to a table, when you click inside a table, a new ribbon will come on the top. Table design or table. Okay. So that is how we know that it is a table. Right now, I don't see any such, op any such option on the ribbon. So this is a normal range. How to convert it to a table? You can do a command, a control plus T. Okay, but that will, as you can see, it has outlined the data in the table. So this whole thing is going to become a table. Or you could do a control A. Okay, the whole area will be selected. You have to click just anywhere in, in any one cell in the, in the range. Click on any one cell in the range and do a control A then do a control T. Either way it is the same, but I prefer doing control A before doing a control T. Even if you do directly control T, no problem there. Next thing that we need to remember here is our table has headers, right? Our table has headers, the first one uh, column here. Uh, in the first row for every column, the header is there. So this is selected and I'll click on okay. So it, there are different designs to choose from depending on what we choose accordingly, this will change and all. Okay, now that I have my data inside a table, we can go ahead and give a name to this table. It is again a good practice to give it a meaningful name rather than leaving it as table one, table two and all. It becomes a little difficult then. So how do I know that this is now a table and not a normal range? Because I have the table ribbon come up. On different versions, uh, it might be different. You might get table design ribbon or table ribbon, depends on the version. So here I have a table ribbon, which means I'm definitely in a table now. And here on the top left corner is where we can give a name to the table. Okay, so let's just call this coffee chain data. Now, one thing that you have to remember while giving names to the tables is do not use any spaces in between. If you have to segregate or give multiple words uh, as the name, like I wanted to give coffee chain and data also. So if I give a space, it doesn't work, should not do that. You can at least use some sort of a separator between them. 
maybe an underscore, a hyphen mark, something, but there should not be any spaces. Okay, I'll hit the enter key. That's the name of my table. So if we give a name to the table, how does it help us? Okay, let us see that. Equal to x lookup. Lookup value is the one in h1 cell, comma, lookup array is in a table named coffee chain. So I'm just taking started, I started to type in and it's showing me the name of the table, this one. How do we reference a particular column? You can open the square bracket. I need to look for the product given in the H1 cell in the product column. You see product column and I'll close the bracket. So you can see the name of the table and the column inside that table. We are referencing the product uh, column present in the coffee chain data table. All right, comma, return array. Again, from the coffee chain data, I need to return or I need to bring back the profit information. So you can see the profit field. The moment I open the square bracket, profit field comes up. So once I choose profit and close the square bracket, you can see this is the return array, okay? And it is even color coding if you notice. H1, there's a blue colored outline here. Coffee chain data product in red, it is highlighted. You can see red outline here and that shade. Coffee chain data profit purple. You can see a purple outline and a light purple shade given to the data, right? So it, it beautifully formats through color, helping us understand what's going on. So once I click the enter key, it pulls back the profit value. Okay, now if I go and change the value in this list, to let's say green tea. Everything has changed accordingly. Green tea is actually into losses. Okay, if I go ahead and change it to decaf Irish cream, you will notice how it has updated and it's giving us the profit. On similar lines, you can do it for sales also, right? So we are now pretty comfortable with XLOOKUP function. Okay. Now, in versions of Tableau where XLOOKUP is not available, how do we achieve the same thing? So I will show it to you with a function called as index in combination with match. Index generally always is used in combination with match to figure out the row number, etc. It, it is very, very helpful.